Welcome What the Problems uh, readers. Uh, this is a supplementary video for the June 2022 um, column uh, counting coins uh, just to show how to create the spreadsheet and how to use it for various parts of the article. So for the first part just how the heck do we create this thing? I've created the headings um, as we've seen here. Uh, one other thing, and this is all done in uh, Google Sheets, but uh, other spreadsheets work uh, similarly. Uh, one thing that I like about Google Sheets that um, I have done already is after I've created my headings, I have selected um, this first row, gone to view, and gone to freeze, and I froze one row. And what that allows us to do is this row with headings, as I uh, scroll through my spreadsheet, that'll remain frozen at the top so that I'll always be able to see my headings. It's a cute, nice little um, feature that we have. So what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, type in the number of nickels, dimes, and quarters. I want the spreadsheet to calculate the number of uh, coins. Uh, the total amount of money, um, as well as the um, money value of the nickels, dimes, and quarters, because our problem, one of the conditions was that two of the three coins had a whole number of um, dollars um, in them. So we have to keep track of that as well. So um, let's look at how we do that. So for the number of coins, I'm basically just going to add the three entries in this nickels, dimes, and quarters uh, row. Um, to tell the spreadsheet to do that, when we click on this cell, and this is cell D2, um, I type in an equal sign. And once you type in an equal sign, it tells the spreadsheet that you're doing a formula and that you're going to do some calculations. And I need to tell it to add things up. So I can either say, well, I want to add this thing. This is cell A2, so I can type in A2 plus, or I can just click on it, B2 plus C2, and then hit enter. And that formula is in there, so that if I put numbers into these three things, away it goes. Now, if I go down to the next one, three, four, five, nothing happens down here because I haven't put a formula in. Now I could go and type in the formula again, or if I click on this box, notice there's a little uh, square at the bottom here. If I pull that down, look what happens. It calculates this guy down here. Um, if I pull down further, I'm going to get 0, 0, 0, um, because if I click on one of those boxes, like if I click on uh, D4 and go up here, look what happens. It put in the formula. So when you do this pulling down, it assumes that your formula is going to use is going to be of the same form the next row down. So since this was a2, B2, C2, if you pull it down, it's going to assume that the 2s will all turn to 3s and the A's will stay the same. Uh, if I was to pull it to the side, which we can do too, it would assume that the 2s would all stay the same and the letters would all shift. So that's a nice way to uh, incorporate formulas. There's ways that you can force things to stay the same in that, but that's more, more advanced than what we need right now. So we've got our number of coins in. Um, we need our money. So the same sort of thing. I'm going to type in equals. Um, I want this in dollars and cents. You could just do it in cents if you like. Um, so a nickel's worth five cents, so it's going to be 0 0.05 times the number of nickels plus 0 0.1 times the number of dimes plus 0 0.25 times the number of quarters. 
Okay. And notice that this autofill comes down and um, it says, hey, do you want to put this formula down here? Um, we could. I'm not going to for now um, because I'm going to show you a different way to sort of fill things in. But for now, let's just pull it down to the other one to show that it would calculate down here as well. Now in this N dollars, D dollars, and Q dollars, I want the amount of money in nickels, dimes, and quarters. So here I'm just going to go equals 0 0.05 times nickels. Here I'm going to go equals 0 0.1 times the dimes. And here I'm going to go equals 0 0.25 times the quarters. Okay. Now, if I pull these all down, it calculates in each spot. Um, but what I'm going to do is I want to put those formulas in other places. I'm going to select all of these last rows that have formulas in them. And notice I get a little square down here. It means that when I pull that down, the formulas for all the cells are going to go down. So all I'm going to do is yank this down, you know, far enough that I'm going to have um, enough entries in my spreadsheet to deal with. Um, later on, if you ran out of cells, and you came to the end, you could just grab on those calculated ones, pull them down, and you're good to go. So now this thing is set up so that if we do like we did in figure one and typed in 164, it calculates my 164, uh, $12 that's made up of five dollars nickels, six of dimes, and one of quarters. Um, which we don't have enough money and then we could proceed with trial and error from there. And now we can go through and do um, our trial and error and we can try to find some solutions to the problem. Now later on in the article we discuss, um, we find a pattern between the nickels, the dimes, and the quarters in the form that if I have three nickels um, and one quarter, it's worth 40 cents. If I have four dimes, it's worth 40 cents. And I have two collections of four coins that give us the same amount of money. And what that means is that if I replace four dimes with three nickels and a quarter, I'm going to keep my number of coins and my number of dollars exactly the same. So if we start um, with this value here, which we found at the bottom of figure two, um, where I've got the right number of coins, the right amount of money, but the amount of money in each of our uh, coins doesn't satisfy the conditions of the problem. Um, the nickels and dimes aren't in, um, whole number of dollars. Let's use that pattern. So what I want to do is I want to at this step, at my next step, take away four dimes and change that into three quarters, or sorry, into one quarter and three nickels. So how can we do that? Well, if I look at this next row, what I want to do is I want to take away four dimes. So again, I could put in a formula. I can go equals this guy minus four. So at my next step, I'm going to have four less dimes. And again, if I pull that down, it's going to keep doing that. For my nickels, equals again. Now it's going to be the number of nickels before. And I'm adding three new nickels. And my quarters is going to be quarters plus one. So if we look at 
this second row, notice we've got 164 and 1950, exactly the same as before, but I've got a different collection. And if I look over at my, my money, I still don't satisfy the conditions of the problem. And now what we can do with these three things is I can just pull those things down and I can get more and more solutions. Now at the end of the article um, we actually come up with a way to uh, we came up with a parametric uh, equations that described all of the possible solutions to this part of the problem the money and the coin number part and we saw that there was 36 solutions if we started with this, we'd actually get 35 of the 36. There's going to be one more here where if I change um, three nickels and a quarter into a dime, I would have one nickel. Um, but that's not going to give me my, my value as well. So what we can do is we can just go through here and pull these guys down. See what happens. If I go too far, notice I'm into the negatives. So that those wouldn't be allowed solutions. Um, but if I start going through this and looking at my nickels, dimes, and quarters, the amount of money in those, and I'm looking for cases where I've got whole amount of monies of each of them. So in this case, I found one solution. Um, I could probably go here and oh, I've made things so big I can't see my... Boom, there, so I can just... Um, paint the background to highlight that and I can just look through for cases where two of the three things are whole number of money of, of dollars so if I scoot down a little bit further there's eleven dollars but that's no good there's two nine and eight fifty right there and so on. And we can go through and find all of our solutions that way. Now one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning uh, that I had set up in the, the spreadsheet that I forgot to mention is I wanted everything in dollars and cents. The way that I did it, um, it came out to dollars and cents because at the beginning I selected the whole row, I went up to format, number, and changed the number Oops format number and there you go let's do that again format number and I change it to currency and then it just knows that every number that it comes across it's gonna write it as if it's dollars and cents and I did the same thing for these columns over here um, I could do it for the number of coins, and I would think that the number of coins was dollars and cents, but it's not. So I can just change that back to a number. Uh, now it thinks that it's um, got decimal places, so I can decrease the number of decimal places on that. Okay, for this last part we're going to look at uh, how we can get that final solution in here. So again, we'll start with this. I've already set this guy up as we did before. Uh, but at the end, we found a set of parametric equations that depended on this variable L. So I'm going to add a new column here that I'm just going to call L. And I know that my nickels, dimes, and quarters depend on this. So I know that nickels is going to be 30 times whatever L is, um, minus 80. My dimes is going to be um, 250 minus 40 times whatever L is. And my quarters is going to be 10 times L. Um, minus 6. And again, we can take these formulas and yank them down. 
And we also saw that L has to be between uh, 3 and 6. So if I start L at 3 here and tell it to go up by 1, so I want it to be equal to this 1 plus 1. So I'm going to get 3, 4, and so on. If I look at what happens, um, my coins and my money all stay the same. And if I look at my solutions, um, whole number of dollars, whole number of dollars, whole number of dollars, whole number of dollars. And there's my four solutions. Now, it continues to spit out things that satisfy our conditions, but notice that now we're going to go into the negatives. And if I used uh, two and one, then the nickels would be negatives. Um, and we're scooting between whole number of dollars here. And if you notice what's happening as we go from one solution to the other, the nickels are going up by a dollar fifty uh, because we're going up by th uh, thirty nickels. The quarters um, are going up by a dollar fifty um, or two fifty, sorry, um, because of the number of quarters, and the dimes are going down by the four dollars. So it's sort of 10 times that first pattern that we had found. Um, and since we started with $13 and the, the dimes are going down by $4, the dimes will always stay a whole number of dollars. And since um, the nickels and quarters are going up by a whole number of dollars plus 50 cents, the quarters started with a whole number of dollars. The nickels started with something with 50 cents added. Then at the next turn, nickels will go to a whole number of dollars and quarters will have the extra 50 cents and they'll just sort of bounce back and forth. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, feel free to send me any email, emails if you have any questions and I'll probably start doing features like this um, with future columns as well.